Hello, welcome to this course on how to draw a rhino in a realistic and cartoon style. Here, I'll show you how to study the anatomy of the rhino and understand it. And this way, we can draw the animal later in any way we want. On this course, we're going to use two very classical styles to draw a rhino, a realistic style and a cartoon style. So I think you understand what I mean by a realistic style. This is where we represent reality as closely as possible. I don't mean necessarily copying a photograph, which we could also do, but the objective is to understand the anatomy of the animal so we can draw it without having to copy, using photos only as references. A cartoon style is what you're used to seeing in most animated movies or series. When we draw in this style, the shapes are simplified to make something fun or exaggerated, sometimes even infantile. Cartoon has many branches and different styles, but we always recognise it as soon as we see it. It might seem like an easy style because the lines are very simple, but that's not the case at all, and I'll explain why. The realistic style is defined primarily by a very precise analysis of nature and an attempt to transfer this to our canvas in the most exact way possible. Many times artists will take artistic licenses when drawing realistically, but this might be related to the stroke or some kind of visual effect. The proportions and measurements are usually very precise in this particular style. However, a cartoon style has studied the shapes of an element, taken it to a realistic style, and then simplified the shapes and the stroke to create something new that we all recognise as something from nature. As you go along, you'll have to define your own style, and the more personal this is, the more you'll be identified as an artist. I always recommend that you research your favourite artists, and if you don't know many, have a look at art-related websites or books. By doing this, you'll see that some work grabs your attention more than others, and that means that it probably fits in with your artistic identity. Copy from the artists you admire and try to create your own identity. Let's just connect all of this with what we're going to learn on the course. When we start, I'll show you the three main types of anatomy in animals. I say main because a large percentage of them are included in this structure, but you might find more if you do some research. When we know how to break down the main structure of an element, we can then adjust the sizes of this to obtain a stylized or exaggerated drawing of what we want to represent. So basically, another artistic style. I'm speaking generally because this process is valid for anything you want to draw. Animals, people, plants, objects, anything. The key is to learn how to summarise with your eyes and your hand. After analysing these main anatomical shapes, we'll focus on the rhino. I'll explain three small shapes and the direction of these, which is key to representing this animal in the way you want. We need to understand something that at first seems very complicated and then reduce it to a few simple lines. But you'll see how it works. Of course, after this, we'll focus on a realistic drawing of a rhino. We won't copy an image exactly, but we'll use it as a reference. The difference is that by copying, we produce a drawing that's exactly the same as a photo or a model, and if we reference an image, on the other hand, we use it as a starting point, and then we're free to pick and choose elements, poses, or shapes. My rhino isn't the same as the photos, but it works. And that's the key. Then we'll use an ink stroke to draw the line and small areas of shading to achieve an interesting effect. And lastly, we'll do the same with our cartoon drawing. You'll see how convincing the rhino looks when we simplify the shapes. You'll also see that tracing the cartoon and the realistic drawing is very different. Every style has its tricks. Okay, so you're ready to get going. Let's start with the anatomy and I'll see you there.